Good morning. We want to welcome you to morning worship on this Sunday. And it's an incredible day that God has for you and I. I know today's a little bit different because we're not all gathered here in this location. But the beautiful thing about technology is we can still connect today and we can still join together. And let me just tell you something. As I got up this morning... And I was praying early this morning. I want to say this right off the top of this service. As I began to pray, what come up out of my spirit as I was praying was this. God has something good for me today. That's what came up out of my spirit. God has something good for me today. And I'm talking to many of you that are watching this right now. And I want you to declare that over your life. God has something good for me today. God has something good for you. God has something good for me. I want you just to declare that right now. Come on, just say that right now, right there where you're at. God has something good for me today. Because you see, we serve a good God. We serve a good God. James 1 says every good and perfect gift comes from above. So as a child of God, God has incredible things for you today. And I want you to to get that. We're going to open a prayer in just a moment. But I want you to get that in your spirit right from the top of this service that God has something good for you. Declare that over your life. If you're watching with some other people, tell them that right now. And I want you to get ready. And believe that God has great things. An attitude of expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. There's a lot of negativity that's going on in our world today, but God has something good. I want to welcome every single one of you uh, to the service today for logging on, for watching this and worshiping the Lord. I want to welcome you, and I'm just going to encourage you to go ahead and put it, type in the comments. Uh, Say hello, let us know where you're watching from, and feel free to interact during this service. You can say amen if you want to at some point. Throw some hand clap emojis, whatever you want to do. But uh, just uh, let us know where you're watching from. Let us know that you're on. We'd love to know who's joining us for service today. And then go ahead and share this because we got a powerful time of worship and a powerful word that God has given me that we're going to share in just a little bit and release to you. So I just encourage you, go ahead and share this broadcast so we can connect with as many people as possible. So take a moment and just go ahead and do that right now. Go ahead and share it. And then I want us to pray, and I want us to agree together in prayer. And uh, you see, the Bible says, where two or more shall agree, as if touching any one thing, it shall be done. There's power in agreement. And we may be joining together over the Internet today, but I'm telling you what, we're connecting together. God has great things. So let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the privilege and the opportunity to gather together and to worship you, to gather as one heart and to worship you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we honor you. And so, Lord, we just invite you today, Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts and in our lives. And we thank you, and we just get ready to receive, and we declare again, God has something good for me today. We declare it, and we give you thanks In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Now, if you're watching with someone, look at them right now and say, God has something good for you today, and let's worship the Lord together. worship our king come let us bow at his feet he has done great things see what our savior has done see how his love overcomes he has done great things he has done great Captain. 
captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. faithful through every storm you'll be faithful forevermore you have done great things i know that you'll do it again for your promise is yes and amen you will do great things god you do great heaven you conquer the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things hallelujah god Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you've done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you've done great things, you've done great things. the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things hero of heaven you conquer the grave you free every captive and Break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. Amen. Hallelujah. God has done great things. As we go through this uh, struggling week, I'm sure it's been a, a weird week for some of you. It's been a weird week for me. Um, the one thing we can uh, remember is that God not only has done great things, but he hasn't changed. He's still going to do great things. Even in times of struggle, he can still do great things. He can do great things through us. And I think as we have this time to sit and reflect and maybe the, the noise of life has uh, quieted in a different way, but gotten louder in others, uh, maybe we take this time of self-reflection and we, uh, we ask, you know, what are the great things God wants to do through me? Um, what does he want to say to me? And no matter how uh, challenging things can get, we can press into God and trust in him. Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet At every moment of my wandering It never changes what you see I've tried to win this war, I confess My hands are weary need your rest mighty warrior king of the fight no matter what i face you by my side when you don't move the mountain i'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters i wish i could walk through 
when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you. I will trust, I will trust, trust in truth you know what tomorrow brings there's not a day ahead that you've not seen so in all things be my life and breath i want what you want lord and nothing less when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters i wish i could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you. I will trust, trust, trust in you. Trust in you. You are my strength and comfort. You are my steady hand. You are my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Always higher, your plans are always good. There's no place where I'll go, you've not already stood. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, trust in you. I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you. I will trust, trust, trust in you. Trust in you. Trust in you. Put our trust in God. What has he asked you to trust in him for? What is he asking you to say, hey, give it to me. Uh, you don't need to bear this. I made the decision to bear these things for you and I will take them from you. Take these hands and Lift them up, for I have not the strength to praise you near enough. See, I am nothing, I am nothing without you. Take my voice and pour it out. Let it sing the songs of mercy I have found. For I am nothing, Lord, I am nothing without you. All my soul needs is all your love. without you take my body build it up may it be broken as an offering of love for I am nothing Lord I am nothing without you and all my soul
without you. Take my time here on this earth. Let it glorify all that you are worth. For Lord, I am nothing. I am nothing without you. And all my soul needs is all your love to cover me so all the world can see that I am nothing. No matter what you're reaching out to God for today, what you're trying to connect with him, answers you're trying to get, worries you're trying to displace, he's willing to take those. But no matter what we try and do on our own, it's, it's typically hollow when it comes to, uh, you know, working with God, when it comes to what we can do, what we can accomplish with God's help. And so for that, one of the things maybe, maybe God's asking us to do in this time of question, in this time of potential worry, unknown, maybe he's asking us to change our hearts. Maybe he's asking us to change what we have in our heart and say, God, let my dreams go. What are your dreams for me, Lord? I know you wouldn't lead me anywhere. I know you wouldn't lead me anywhere that would hurt me, Lord. You're just going to fulfill me. You're just going to fulfill your word through my actions if I, if I trust in you, if I change where my heart's pointed. So one of the prayers I have for myself today is, God, what are you asking me to do? Make it known to me and let me be, let me be on board with it, Lord. Let me say, man, that's, that's a lot more than you usually ask, Lord, or that's a lot more than I'm comfortable with at this moment. But with your help, I know I can trust that we can get it done. You will, you will qualify the call, Lord, and I just ask that I would be on board with your call and that anything you ask me to do is well with me. Earth has quaked before, moved by the sound of his voice. Seas that are shaken and stirred, calmed and broken for my regard. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well with me. Be it for me not to believe, even when my eyes can't see. This mountain that's in front of me Being thrown into the midst of the sea and Through it all, through it all My eyes are on you And through it all, through it all It is well And through it all, through it all My eyes are on you And it is well It is well Still know his name. So 
as well with my soul it is well the words of that song says through it all my eyes are on you and it is well with me I want you to take a moment right there where you're at and can we just can we just in our own words just lift up our voice to the Lord and let's just thank him lift up our heart to the Lord aren't you glad that he never changes circumstances may change but God never changes through it all through it all. God, my eyes are on you. And Lord, right now, while people are just worshiping you, and in our own words and from our heart, we're telling you how awesome that you are. And we're worshiping and magnifying your name. And we're honoring you and adoring you. We thank you, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. That's right, Lord. Your word says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today and forever. And so, Lord, we choose to bless you right now. We choose to worship you. I encourage you right there where you're at. Come on, take just a moment and lift up the name of Jesus. Take just a moment and bless the Lord with me because he's worthy of all praise. He's worthy. Lord, you are worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord, and we worship you. We worship you. The Bible says the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah, Jesus. So, Lord, even right now, even right now, while we worship you, Lord. Lord, I sense your presence. Lord, every home, every place right here in this room, everywhere that's watching, Lord, just let your presence just begin to sweep into that room right now as folks are worshiping you. Hallelujah. I'm going to encourage you right now. Fix your eyes on Jesus. It might be easy wherever you're watching. It might be easy to get distracted by something else, but I'm going to encourage you to guard against that and focus your attention on him right now because he's worthy. He is worthy. Spirit of the living God, sweep into every room right now. 
sweep into this place. Let the wind of the Holy Ghost blow in our midst, even right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because, Lord, you are worthy. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. We bless the name of Jesus. We bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. The Spirit of God stirring people's hearts even right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you, O God. Worthy is the Lamb of the Lord. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb of God. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want you to reach out to the Lord right there where you're at. While we're in this attitude of worship, while we're just blessing the Lord. Maybe there's a need in your life this morning. I know a lot of people are walking through a lot of things. Would you give it to the Lord right now? The Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. He cares for you. We declared at the top of the service today, God has something good for me today. So whatever it is, I'm going to encourage you to give it to the Lord right now. If you're, if you're with some other people where you're watching, would you just begin to pray together? Maybe there's somebody in your midst that needs special prayer. Let's just take a moment and let's just pray right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we just lift up our voices. Lord, we give every need and every situation to you in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord, that with you nothing is impossible. And so, Lord, every need, every circumstance, everything that people may be facing today, Father, we give it to you right now in the name of Jesus. We call on your name, and I ask you, God, to touch the people. I ask you, God, to touch every person that's watching and that's a part of this service today. God, touch every need. We give it to you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, your people are calling on you right now, calling on you right now. We stand on your word and we pray in faith and we thank you, God. Father, I take this opportunity to lift up our nation. Lord, we just come into agreement right now in prayer. We lift up our nation before you, God. We lift up this world, Lord, that's walking through something great. And, Father, we ask you to move in our nation. We ask you to pour out your spirit. We come against this virus, Lord, that the spreading of it would cease and stop in Jesus' name. I come against a spirit of fear and panic and worry that's sweeping our world. Father, we come against that in the name of Jesus. Father, we come into agreement and we pray for our leaders, for our president, our vice president, Lord, our Congress, all of our leaders in federal government, our governor, our state leaders, our local leaders, county commissioners, mayors. Father, we lift up our leaders, Father, and we ask you to give them wisdom. We ask you, God, to give them strength. We pray divine protection, divine guidance in their life, divine health in their life. God, the wisdom of God to help them lead during this time. We pray for business leaders that are having to make decisions. And, and Lord, we pray you would be with our business leaders in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for our spiritual leaders, for every pastor, every spiritual leader, that you would give them strength and courage and wisdom in this hour. Father, our eyes are upon you, and we look to you, and we thank you today. And Father, we know that you are still working, and you are still moving, and we give you the praise today in the mighty name of God. Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. I believe that today in Jesus' name. And I'm just believing with you that what you're believing God for today, God will do it because God has something good for you 
and for me today. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I just want to say uh, thank you again for joining us. We're having a powerful time of worship, and uh, we have so much left. But I just believe, I just uh, believe in my heart that right where where you're at, you are encountering and experiencing the presence of God. Thank God that He is everywhere, present at all time. May we encounter His manifest present today. I know things are a little bit different. Churches all across America are utilizing technology and having to make some adjustments so that we can help follow guidelines, and, and we're, we're asking God and we're trusting God. We're going to get through this as a nation, and uh, I know things are a little bit different, but I want to thank you for joining today and uh, watching with us today and being a part, but don't just watch. Can I encourage you? Don't just watch. Don't just be a spectator. This is a service for you to enter in, worship the Lord, receive from God, uh, interact in the comments. If you want to say amen during the service, you can say that in the comments. If you want to clap your hand, put a a hand clap emoji in there. Say something in there. Uh, If you have a prayer request that you want to share and uh, you want us to pray with you about, you can put that in the comments and we can all be agreeing with you in prayer. So there's ways that you can interact and be a part of this service today. I want to take this opportunity and share a couple of announcements. Uh, and a couple of these things are, first of all, for if, if Calvary Temple is your home church, I know we have many watching, but those that are a part of the Calvary Temple family, just a couple of items you need to be aware This Wednesday evening, our normal Bible study at 6.30 uh, will be online only. We will not uh, still be able to meet together on Wednesday evening. And so we'll be online Wednesday evening at 6.30 uh, right here on Facebook, right where you're watching today. You can join in for Bible study this Wednesday evening at 6.30. And then also for our Calvary Temple family, we originally had scheduled our annual business meeting for next Sunday. Uh, and uh, we, we don't know all exactly what's going to be happening next Sunday. We'll let you know. But we are going to go ahead and postpone the business meeting. And we're rescheduling that right now for April the 19th. And so business meeting will be postponed until April the 19th. Now, I believe during this time we're to be the church. And so let me tell you about a food drive. This is the hour for the church to be the church. And uh, we are joining with other organizations and churches across the community. And if you're in the local area and want to help us with a food drive to be able to bless people in this time of need, and we're going to help working with food pantries and other uh, ministries, uh, you can drop those off here at the church uh, sometime this week. And uh, we already have a collection started, and we're going to be donating those items. And so let's be the church during this hour. And then I want to encourage you, the slide that's on your screen is information so that you can still worship the Lord today with your tithes and with your offerings. And so you'll see on the screen a couple of different ways that you can give. You can go to perucalvary.org forward slash give. And all of the instructions, follow the link there on that page, and it will tell you how you can give digitally. Uh, You can text to give by texting the number that's on your screen right now, and you can text to give, and you can text the keyword. If you're giving tithes or just an offering, you can just text the keyword give, and then the amount. Uh, If you're part of this church and you want to give missions offering, you can text uh, keyword missions and give the amount. All of the keywords are on the webpage at perucalvary.org forward slash give. We encourage you to continue to be faithful to the Lord with your giving and worship the Lord during this time. If you don't have the ability or or not sure about giving online, you can also uh, go to that website and you can mail in uh, tithes and offerings as well. But I'm going to encourage you to continue to put God first financially with your giving, with your tithes, and with your offerings. And so while folks are taking a moment, maybe you're doing that right now. Uh, Jeremy's going to lead us just in one more song of worship, and uh, we're going to get ready to get into the Word.
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Won't you open the eyes of my heart? I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Would you open the eyes of my heart? I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Would you open the eyes of my heart? I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Would you open the eyes of my heart? I want to see you. I want to see you, see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 holy. to see you I want to see you open the eyes of my heart Lord open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you
We're going to get into the Word of God this morning. In that video, we were just challenged about fixing our eyes upon Him, listening to the Lord, listening to His Word. And uh, we're going to go to Romans chapter 4 this morning. And so if you have your Bibles there close by, uh, open those up to Romans chapter 4. And we're going to begin reading uh, in just a moment with verse number 18. But there's a word that's burning in my heart this morning. And I want you to get ready to receive what God has to say to you and to me today. And so as you're turning to Romans chapter 4, uh, I want you to repeat this after me and say this with me. The Word of God is the will of God. The Word of God is the wisdom of God. And the Word of God is the revelation of God. And I want you, do you believe that? I want you to get that into your spirit because that is so true and thank God for his word. And so let's go to Romans chapter 4, verse number 18. I want to encourage you to have a hearing heart this morning. It says, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as at it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. And without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. And Holy Spirit, we just ask you and invite you to speak to our hearts to transform our life in Jesus' name. And I pray, God, that you would speak to every single one of us, that we might be transformed in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say amen and amen. Now, I want you to realize this today. We all know this. We are living in times that seem uncertain. We're living in times that seem uncertain. You see, the world seems to be in chaos. The world uh, seems to be in disarray. There's a lot of fa fear. There's a lot of panic. There's a lot of worry. A lot of things that are, that are uh, racing through this world. Uh, we're living through some things that you and I have never seen before. And you see, also, there's a lot of voices that are speaking in our world right now. A lot of voices, a lot of people saying a lot of things. We have a lot of information readily available to us at our fingertips, on our phones, our tablets, our computers, uh, turning on the television. We have information readily available. It seems right now that there's breaking news every 10 minutes or so. Just a, a lot of voices that are speaking, a lot of opinions that are going around, a lot of statements that are being made, a lot of facts that are being put out there. There's a lot of voices to listen to. But here's what I want to challenge you and I about this morning. In the midst of all of this, in the midst of all of the voices, God is still speaking. I want you to think about that. God is still speaking. Do you hear his voice? Are you listening to what God is saying? Do you hear what God is saying? Can I say this this morning? His voice needs to be the loudest voice in our life. We may be listening to other things. We may be staying up to date on other things. But let me encourage you, his voice needs to be the loudest voice 
in our life. In other words, we need to live by what God is saying. We need to be in the Word. We need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And we need to be listening. What's God saying to me in this hour? What's God speaking in this hour? And I'm going to show you this morning why it's so important that we're hearing the voice of God. Now, in our text, in Romans chapter 4, we are reading about Abraham. And if you want to read more about Abraham, you can can read about him in in Genesis. But here in Romans chapter 4, Paul is writing about Abraham. And we read here that Abraham chose to listen to God. Remember I said, are you listening to him? Abraham chose to listen to God even when God was saying something that seemed to contradict what Abraham was seeing. Oh, let me say that again. Abraham listened to what God was saying, even when it seemed to contradict what Abraham is seeing. I want to make a statement right now, and I want you to think about this, and and you may want to put this in the comments for everybody to see. Feel free to type this in there. But the statement is this. Don't just focus on what you see, but focus on what God is saying. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. Don't just focus on what you see, what's going around you in the natural realm. We don't ignore it. We know it's there. But don't just focus on on what you see. Focus on what God is saying. In the midst of it all, we sang earlier, through it all, my eyes are on you. In the midst of everything that you see, make sure you're really focusing on what's God saying. What's God saying about what's going on? What's God saying about your situation? Because it's what God is saying is what we need to hear. Now, I want to make this statement. And this is where we're going to go this morning. Because I've been chewing on this. And I believe I'm supposed to share this today. There is a difference between fact and truth. I'm going to explain what I mean. And I'm going to show you right from this passage. There is a difference between fact and truth. Both of them are real. But there's a difference between them. A difference between between fact and truth. And I'm going to make a few statements about fact and truth. And I'm going to show you from the Word of God. Now get this in your spirit. If you haven't already shared this, make sure you share this service with somebody because this is a word I believe that's going to encourage everybody. Let me make this statement about fact and truth. Fact is based on earthly evidence. Truth is is based on God's promises. You may want to write that down. Fact is based on earthly evidence. Truth is based on God's promises. What's earthly evidence? What I can see, what I can hear, what I can smell, what what is proven to be true. There are facts. That's based on earthly evidence. Truth is based on what God's promises. What is God saying? That is truth. And you're going to see sometimes that truth overrides facts. Now watch this this morning. Abraham, look in your Bible there again with me. I'm reading out of the NIV. And in verse 19, it says, Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact. Some translations say he considered his body to be as good as dead. He faced the fact. He seen, he observes, he realized earthly evidence, human reasoning tells him. He faced the fact that his body was as good as dead and Sarah's womb was also dead. That was a fact. All right, it's real. That was a fact. But God was telling him, that his offspring would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. In Genesis, you read, he he said, look at the stars in the sky, so shall your offspring be. And we read that here again in Romans. He said, so shall your offspring be. So he faced the fact, 
I'm an old man. I shouldn't be able to have children. He faced the fact, my wife is old. Her, 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 her womb is dead. She can't bear children. That was a fact. But truth said something different. God said, no, I still say you're going to have children. You will bear a son, and your offspring will be as the stars in the sky. Fact said they're too old to have children. But truth said they would have children of their own anyway. Do you see that? Fact is real, but truth is greater. Fact is real, but truth is greater. It's based, fact is based on what you see, earthly evidence. But truth is based on what God says. Oh, hallelujah. Get that in your spirit. Truth is based on what God says. Truth is greater. Why? Because it deals with the supernatural realm. Facts deal with the natural realm. You see, think about this for just a moment. There are two realms. There's the natural realm and there's the supernatural realm. We live in a natural realm. We have a natural body. We have five natural senses. Everything we see here, we, it's real around us. But truth operates in the supernatural because God is a supernatural. He's above natural. He's beyond natural. He don't operate in the natural realm. He's supernatural. Therefore, God can do what is not naturally possible. Think about that this morning. I want you to, I want you to realize that we serve a supernatural God. So, so the facts around you may be saying you're financially ruined. That's what, that's what, how things appear. That's what it looks like. That's what the facts. The facts around you may say you're never going to recover. You've lost your job. Your business will never bounce back. The facts around you, everything may be looking like that. The facts around you may say, you're sick in body. Maybe you're battling a sickness or a disease, and maybe you have for some time. The facts would say, the doctors may say, you'll never get better. You've got to live with this the rest of your life. That's what the facts say. The facts may be saying, you're bound by an addiction. Maybe you're bound by an addiction, and the facts would say, people would say, you're just going to have to learn to live with that. You'll never be able to get free from that. The facts around you may say, there's no hope. That's what the facts may be saying. Facts are based on earthly evidence. Truth is based on God's promises. So let me make a second statement about fact and truth now. Fact may say it's over, but truth says it's not over. Fact may say it's over. There's no answer. There's no hope. Truth says it's not over. There is an answer, and there is hope. You see, because look at your Bible again in Romans 4. Look at verse 18. It says, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations against all hope let me read that verse out of the new living translation here's how it says it even when there was no reason for hope Abraham kept hoping oh hallelujah I want you to hear that get it in your spirit even when there was no reason for hope Abraham Kept on hoping. So the facts may say there is no hope. Truth says there is hope. Keep on hoping. Put your hope in God. Put your trust in God. And keep on hoping. It's not over. With God, it's not over. That's why his voice needs to be the loudest voice in our life. What are we believing? What do we choose to believe? Abraham still had hope in spite of how things seemed. Abraham chose to believe what God said. He chose to focus on the truth, not on the facts. He chose to believe what God was promising for him. He chose to put his trust and his confidence in God. 
It may look like it's over, but truth says it's not over. So as I said a moment ago, the facts may say that you're financially ruined, that you'll never recover, that there's no solution to this. But truth says, for the child of God, truth says in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. For the child of God, truth says that if we stay faithful to him and put him first, he says, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. The facts might be saying you'll never recover from a sickness that you have. The facts may, but truth says by his stripes you are healed. Truth says with God nothing shall be impossible. You see what I'm saying? Fact may say it's over, but truth is greater, and truth, God says it's not over. It's not over. Facts may say you'll always be bound by an addiction. No, truth says he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus can set anyone free from anything. Facts may be saying there's no hope, but God is saying, truth is saying there is hope. When you put your hope and confidence in God, there is always hope. It's not over. I want you to declare. You may want to put that in the comments. Say, it's not over. God is not finished working. That's it. Come on, put that in. It's not over. God is not finished working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. Have faith in God. I like what it says there. Abraham, in hope, believed and so became. Notice him becoming the father of many nations came after he believed. He believed and so he became. If you choose not to believe, you'll miss out on what God has for you. You'll miss out on what God wants to do. But becoming comes after believing. Have faith in God. Have faith. The facts say try to trust in man. Truth says trust in God. So fact says it's over. Truth says it's not over. Have faith in God. God, that's right. Come on, put that in there. It's not over. God is still working. He's still working. Get this in your spirit. I'm feeding your faith with the word this morning. Here's a third statement I want to give you about fact and truth. We're talking Looking at the story of Abraham, and we're looking at the difference between fact and truth. Here's statement number three. Focusing on fact can weaken your faith. Focusing on truth will strengthen your faith. Look at this. Let me say that again. Focusing on fact, just just focusing on what you see around you. Certain facts can weaken your faith. But when you focus on truth, what God is saying, it will always strengthen faith. Because look at what it says here. In verse 19 of Romans 4, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact his body was as good. He didn't weaken in his faith. But verse 20 says that he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in faith. Do you realize your faith can grow weak or your faith can become stronger? What condition is your faith? Think about that. In what condition is your faith? Your faith can grow weak or your faith can become strong. Listen to me, church. We need strong faith. We need great faith. That's going to determine what we're listening to. That's going to be determined by what we're focusing on, focusing on truth. Abraham was strengthened in his faith. Why? Because he chose to listen to God. He chose He was strengthened. He chose to focus. I know what I see, but I'm paying even more attention to what God is saying. And it says there, he was fully persuaded. Wow, think about that. He was fully persuaded, totally confident that God had power to do what he had promised. Where was his trust in? 
the power of God. Can I tell you today, God's power is unlimited. It doesn't matter what we face, God is bigger. It doesn't matter what we face, God's power is greater. God's power is unlimited. And Abraham was fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he promised. God doesn't just say something to be saying it. He always has the power to back up what he says. He has the power to back up what he says. Fact is real, but remember, truth is greater because God's power is unlimited. You see, when you look at facts, facts will tell you, well, some things are impossible. But when you look at truth, truth tells you with God all things are possible. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a supernatural realm that God's power is greater than the natural realm. What's not possible in the natural is possible with God. Think about that. So what are we focusing on? When we focus on what God says, our faith becomes stronger. We can become fully persuaded. We can become convinced. We need to make sure we're focusing on what God is saying. Now, there's nothing wrong with being aware of the facts around you. I'm not saying we go around pretending like nothing's going on. There's a real virus in our world. There are people getting sick. There are people dying. I'm not saying we pretend like and ignore it's not happening. No, 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 no. I'm not saying we don't listen and stay up to date on what's going on. But what I'm saying is we need to put our greatest attention on what God is saying in the midst of it all. Because think about it. Think about it. The news reports the facts. But facts can sometimes produce fear. If all you focus on is what the world is saying and what the facts are showing you and you just binge watch news 24-7 right now or anytime, then I guarantee you, you're probably gripped with fear and worry and panic because if that's all you're feeding is the problems of this world, then your faith is getting weaker. But if you're in the midst of it all, spend plenty of time in God's Word. You see, uh, the news reports the facts, but God's Word declares the truth. Keep your mind fixed on the Word, and so spend a lot of time in the Word. Spend time in prayer, quality time in prayer, listening to the Holy Spirit. And as you do, your faith will become stronger and become stronger and become stronger. How do I know that? Because that's what the Word teaches. In Romans 10, 17, it says, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word.
to be stronger than ever before. We're to be salt. We're to be light in this world. The church needs us more than ever before to be strong in this hour. How can we be the light? How can we encourage others? How can we minister to others if our faith is weak? So I'm going to encourage you to get in the word and, and choose to grow your faith and choose to believe what God is saying. Now let me give you some examples. Let me give you some examples and then we're going to pray. Now think about this. In Numbers 13, in Numbers 13, we read that God had Moses send 12 spies to explore Canaan. God had Moses to send 12 spies to explore Canaan. Ten of them came back and said, we can't conquer Canaan. Ten of them came back and said, no, the land is too big. The enemy is too great. Ten of them came back and said, we can't do it. Even though God had said, I'm giving you the land. Ten chose to believe what they saw. Ten of them said, it says in scripture in Numbers, ten of them said, we look like grasshoppers in their eyes. That's what ten of them said. We look like grasshoppers. We can't do it. But two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, said no. God said he'll give us the land. He will do it. We can take the land. Let's go take the land. You see, ten of them chose to believe the facts, and two of them chose to believe the truth, what God said. That's what happened. And so you know what? The ones that didn't believe ended up missing out on the promised land. But Joshua and Caleb and a whole new generation went in and conquered. In the New Testament, there was a woman with the issue of blood. The fact was, you remember the story? The woman had spent all of her money on doctors. She had this disease for many years. And, and, and she wasn't getting better, she was getting worse. And so the fact was, there was nothing doctors could do for her. The facts were she had spent all of her money and was getting worse. That was the fact. That was the fact. But she heard Jesus was passing through. And she knew something about Jesus. The fact says you're getting worse. Truth says I'm the Lord who heals you. She chose to say regardless of what I see, I'm going to go out and touch the hem of his garment and I'll be made whole. And she touched Jesus. Power, healing power left Jesus' body. And he looked at the woman and said, your faith has made you whole. Remember, remember Jesus walked on water on more than one occasion. The fact said... Facts will say humans can't walk on water. It's humanly impossible to walk on water. The facts say, but truth walked on water. Jesus walked on water. Jesus, remember, after he died on the cross, he was buried in a tomb. The facts said that Jesus was dead. Yes, he was dead. The facts would say he's gone, but truth raised him up from the dead. Hallelujah. Truth overcame the facts. I'm here to tell you the Bible says if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, it will quicken your mortal body. There's a difference between fact and truth. Now, as I close, I want to challenge us this morning. And I believe faith is being built up in people's hearts as I share this right now. We have to decide in what will I put my confidence in. Think about it. In what will I put my confidence in or in who? Am I going to put my confidence in? In facts, just going off what I see, am I just going to take that at face value and just say, well, there's no hope or nothing? Or am I going to put my confidence and say, through it all, in spite of all, I know what I see, I know what the doctors say, I know what the news is saying, it's real, yes, but I'm going to put my confidence in God with whom nothing is impossible and God can do what man says is impossible. We have to decide. You and I have to choose where we're going to put our confidence. And can I say this about truth? 
Truth actually is a person. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Abraham believed what God said, put his confidence in him. And as a result, what God said about him came to pass. He became the father of many nations. What is God saying to you today? I'm going to ask you that. What is God saying? What's he speaking into your heart? Here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. We're going to pray in just a moment. Please stay with me and don't turn this off because God's working in people's hearts. And we're going to pray. It's going to be powerful. But I'm going to challenge you to do this this week. I'm going to challenge you to get in the Word of God more than ever before. Get in the Word. Make sure you take time and get off social media, get off TV, and spend some time in the Word this week. Stay connected with God. Get in your prayer closet or get into that secret place of prayer and spend quality time in prayer listening to the Holy Spirit, feasting on God's Word, hearing what He's saying to you, meditating on what He's saying to you. Get in the Word. Get in the Word. Get in the Word and let faith build up within you in Jesus' name. You know what I've been declaring? I've been, I've been getting in the Word, and the Word says, the word says uh, no plague will come near your house. And I've been reading Psalm 91 and others and getting in that out of my spirit, the promise of God. Get in the Word, but then not only get in the Word this week, choose to believe what He is saying. You and I have a choice to make. We can read the word. We can hear what God's saying. We got to choose to believe it. We got to choose to believe, to let faith rise up within our heart and let doubt be driven out. You and I have a choice to make. Choose to believe. I'm going to put the, I encourage you, put that in the comments right now. I choose to believe God. I choose to believe God's word. I choose to believe God. God's word. It's a choice. Many people have chosen not to believe God's word. I choose to believe it. I choose to believe it. And then I'm going to encourage you not only get in the word, not only then choose to believe what he's saying, but as that gets into your heart and you become fully persuaded, I want you to begin to declare, speak out loud, and declare over your life and over your family what it is that God is saying. You see, declaration is important. Confession is important. Confessing, declaring what God is saying. Our confession coming into alignment with the word. And of out of our heart, with the heart man believes, with the mouth he confesses, it says in Romans 10, you begin to declare and speak protection, speak life, speak health over your life, speak it over your family. I make faith declarations over my life every day and declare, declare what God is saying about me. Declare it and then receive what God has for you and walk with his promises with confidence in the name of Jesus. Now we're going to pray for needs in just a moment. And I want you to, to hold steady and stay with me. Some of you may be watching this in small groups and homes. Or maybe you're watching this alone. But you're not alone. God's there with you. The Spirit of God is with you. We're agreeing with you. In just a moment we're going to pray. But can I say this? Man's greatest need is salvation. There may be some that are watching this service today online, wherever you may be, and you're worried and you're scared because you've not put your hope in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You see, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. We've all sinned. Every single person has sinned. In Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death. That speaks of eternal separation from God. There is a heaven and there is a hell. The wages of sin is eternity in hell, separated from God. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. It says, But... 
The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's a gift that's being offered to you, ma'am. There's a gift that's being offered to you, sir. If you're, if you're today watching this and you're hearing what I'm saying, and maybe you realize and the Spirit of God is moving on your heart, that's what it is, and you're convinced and you know right now there's a great awareness in you right now that your life is not right with God. You have yet to call on Jesus as your Savior and Lord. You know that if you were to die today, you know you're not sure that you would go to heaven. And none of us has promised our next breath. We have no guarantee of that. And if that's you, I've got good news for you. It's not too late. You can say yes to Jesus today. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth, if we confess our sin before God, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here's what you need to do if your life's not right with God. Confess your sin before God. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I come into, I admit that. I'm a sinner. God, I've sinned before you. And then the Bible says we must repent. We must choose to turn from sin and say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to follow sin. I'm not going to live in sin. I'm turning from sin. I'm turning to you, Jesus. I'm saying yes to you. I receive you as my Savior. I put my faith in you. I receive you as my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. I'm turning my life over to you. And from this day forward, I'm committing to following Jesus. If that's you right where you're at, I want you to call. Call on the Lord right now. If your life isn't right with God, just call out to Him. Come on, right this moment. Call out to Him right now. Say, Lord, forgive me a sinner. Forgive me a sinner. Forgive me, oh God. Forgive me, oh God. Call on Him right now. He'll hear your prayer. Call on Him right now. Hallelujah. Pour your heart out to God right now. Lord, I pray for every person that's watching that may be praying right now and getting their life with you, right with you, surrendering their heart and their life to you. The greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. When all things pass away and we become a new person in Jesus Christ. I pray, God, and I know you're hearing people's cry right now in the name of Jesus. While the church is praying, oh God, I thank you for what you're doing in hearts and lives. Save us, oh God. We surrender our life to you, Jesus. Forgive us of any and all sin. We turn from sin and we turn to you. And we say yes to you, Jesus. We say yes. We say yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it and you called out to God, thank God that he hears us. And I'm going to encourage you to reach out, put in the comments or contact me and let me know. If you prayed that today and you committed and sur surrendered your life to Jesus, please let me know. Let me know because I want to be an encouragement to you. Let somebody else know as well. Get into a church and start following Jesus. Now I want the rest of us, I want us to get ready to pray. Because the facts may have you worried. The facts may have you troubled and full of anxiety and panic. But I've given you the word of God today. Truth is even greater. Put your confidence in him. And if you've got a special need in your life, we're going to pray. I know we prayed a little bit ago, but I want us to pray again right now. And if you're with some other people in the room, they can come into agreement and prayer with you right there where you're at. We're going to pray. We're going to believe God. And when we pray in faith according to God's word, we're not praying I hope so prayers. We're praying I know so prayers. We're saying, God, I know what your word has said. And so I pray with confidence, knowing you're going to answer, knowing you're going to meet this need. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, as folks are just lifting up needs before you, Father, I come into agreement and I pray with each and every single person watching this. We come into agreement right now when we join our faith together all over the place and praying together and calling out to you. And I pray, God, right now that you would touch your people. I pray, God, I speak to sickness and disease right now. 
Woo, hallelujah. I speak to sickness and disease right now. I command sickness to go. I command disease to go. I take authority over sickness and disease. Uh, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, and I release healing. We release the healing power of God by the prayer of faith to go right where they're at, in their room, in a hospital bed. Lord, wherever they may be, we command every system, every organ in their body to be made whole and to come into alignment with the kingdom of God. I command every addiction to be broken in Jesus' name off of people's lives. I command and we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, we give every financial need to you right now. We give it to you. Lord, you're our source anyway. So we put our trust in you. And we know you're going to take care of us. And we thank you for it. Calm every fear. Calm every worry. Lord, when we put our hope in you, the peace of God that passes all understanding guards our heart and mind. Lord, I pray that the peace of God be released in people's lives even now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we receive your touch. Oh, hallelujah. We receive your touch. And I pray, oh God, and I speak divine health over your people. And we declare what your word says, no plague will come near my house. We plead the blood of Jesus over our families. And we speak divine health. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us hands that heal. The Bible says in Mark 16, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Lord, your people, you didn't design for our hands to carry disease. You designed for our hands to be healing hands. May we bring healing to people through the power of Jesus Christ. And Lord, help us to be the church in this hour. We love you. We thank you. And we call all of these things done in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, right there where you're at, just give God praise. Give Him glory. That's it. Come on. Lift it up and give God praise and glory. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer, and we give you praise in advance for what you're going to continue to do. That's expectant praise, folks, when we thank God in advance. We say it's already done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you right there where you're at. I know it's a different kind of a season. I know there's a lot of unknowns. But what we do know is God is still the same. God's going to see us through this. And can I encourage you? Let's be the church. The world needs us to. Let's be the church. Reach out and encourage somebody. Minister Jesus, share the gospel with somebody this week. Share a verse, a word of encouragement with somebody this week. Even though we may be apart from a lot of people, some of you may be working from home, you can still reach out to people, give them a call, send them a text, shoot them a message, encourage somebody. We have all kinds of means to still stay connected. Stay connected and minister to people. There in your home, enjoy the presence of God. With your family, get in the Word this week. Be in the Word. Study. Worship together. Parents, teach your children. Disciple your kids. Minister to them. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, as your pastor, I want you to know that we love you. I want you to know that we are here for you. If there's anything we can do, then I'm going to encourage you to reach out to us. And uh, we want to be a blessing to you and your family in this hour. I want to encourage you to log on here Wednesday night at 6.30. We may go on at, a, at another time this week as well. Uh, you can just watch the Facebook page, and if we decide to go on, we'll try to put out a heads-up notification because we want to continue to encourage you and stay in touch with you. But for sure, 6.30 on Wednesday night, right here on Facebook. And uh, we love you so very much. You can go online and you can give. But uh, encourage one another. If you're with some people, feel free to pray together. Encourage one another. But let's be the church. Let's put our confidence in God. Because with God, all things are possible. God bless you. Make sure you share this. We love you. Have a great week in the Lord.